Hello everyone, it's been a while. You know, I have been struggling as of late to find the words to express how I feel and think about our current political situation. But after the recent news surrounding Chris Cuomo, I thought it would be appropriate to talk about how media outlets sometimes fail to maintain the public trust and how that failure tends to lend itself to an increasingly distrustful public. To put it another way, I want to talk about why the media's inability to remove predatory and corrupt figures from their networks is a threat to their integrity and credibility. As you likely all know, Chris Cuomo, the former host of Cuomo Primetime, was suspended on Tuesday, November 30th, after the New York Attorney General released new evidence against him. The documents she released showed that Cuomo was more heavily involved in assisting his brother against allegations of sexual harassment than he previously let on. And while these documents would ultimately contribute to his downfall, the revelations that came from them were far from the first signs that Cuomo was too connected with his brother. To understand how we got here, it is important to recognize that Cuomo's consistent behavior and his consistent disregard for basic journalistic ethics were permitted by CNN. And it is precisely because of that permissive attitude that Chris Cuomo was able to keep his position and continue to influence the American body politic even though he had many different problems with his ethics and his approach to journalism. From the very beginning, Cuomo misused his position with one of the most famous examples being when he interviewed his brother, then governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, despite a clear conflict of interest. Cuomo, it is bad enough that we had someone like Donald Trump who had a de facto propaganda outlet in Fox News, but it is even worse that a station that purports to be an established, well-respected media outlet allowed an exercise in nepotism to go on their air. And that alone should have been a red flag for anyone in the leadership at CNN. Instead, Cuomo was never disciplined or put on suspension, and this clear violation of journalistic ethics was disregarded in the hopes that people would forget about it. And it is easy to see why. Chris Cuomo was their cash cow, bringing in an average of 846,000 viewers just last month. He was their top-rated host and even helped the network eclipse its liberal rival, MSNBC. And it is likely because of his cash cow role that Chris Cuomo got away with so much. It wouldn't be long before a pattern of behavior revealed itself in how CNN handled his scandals. After the allegations against Governor Andrew Cuomo came to light, Chris seemingly found his journalistic integrity for the moment and refused to cover a story that he had invested interest in. It seemed as though Chris finally learned his lesson and was going to avoid a story that he could corrupt by his personal connections. Of course, that came after it was a sexual harassment story against his own brother, but at the very least, it seemed like he wasn't going to get involved. No, he didn't do that. Instead, he was accused of sexual harassment by his former boss, who still had the apology email he sent her. Shelley Ross, his former boss at ABC, wrote an essay to the New York Times in which he noted how little accountability Cuomo had received for his actions, despite him grabbing her rear without her consent and saying, I can do this now that you're no longer my boss. It's worth noting that he only apologize after he realized that Ross's husband was there. Describing her thoughts on the email, Ross wrote, quote, My question today is the same as it was then. Was he ashamed of what he did, or was he embarrassed because my husband saw it? He apologized first in his email to my very good and noble husband, and then to me. Mr. Cuomo may say this is a sincere apology. I've always seen it as an attempt to provide himself with legal and moral coverage to evade accountability. And it was. It didn't matter that he harassed a woman or never directly apologized to Ross. CNN kept him anyway. Again, the viewers mattered more than the safety and dignity of the station or its employees. Maybe it was the fact that Ross initially didn't call for Chris to be fired and hoped that he would use his influence to make a change. But the fact that CNN never compelled him to acknowledge or even pay for his mistake showed just how little the network cared. It seemed that nothing could make CNN remove this scandal-ridden journalist. Then the New York Attorney General struck again, this time showing that not only did Cuomo help in his brother's defense, he advised him and even pulled up information on his brother's accusers. Three days after it broke that his brother had kissed Anna Rutch against her will, Chris Cuomo sent his brother's advisor, Melissa DeRosa, a text saying, I have a lead on the wedding girl, unquote. He also kept tabs on other journalists covering his brother, including Ronan Farrow. After that, CNN finally decided to take action and suspended Cuomo indefinitely, and then fired him, giving out a statement about him hiding information from the network's leadership. In response to his firing, Chris Cuomo released a statement that could almost be interpreted as defensive about the level of transparency he had with his network. In his statement, Cuomo said, 
This is not how I want my time at CNN 10, but I've already told you why and how I help my brother. So let me now say, as disappointing as this is, I could not be more proud of the team at Cuomo Primetime and the work we did as CNN's number one show in the most competitive time slot. I owe them all and will miss that group of special people who did really important work, unquote. Now initially, it might seem like a very professional, traditional letter you'd see from somebody leaving a network even under these circumstances. But consider that the first line says, I already told you how and why I helped my brother, as if there was anything wrong with what CNN was doing or why they were firing him. It was almost as if he's pretending like there wasn't an issue with the extent of his activities. It's that line, subtle as it may be, that suggests Chris Cuomo didn't learn, and that's precisely why they should have fired him in the first place. Whether or not Cuomo hid the truth of his involvement, the fact that he was involved at all while holding a position at CNN is a massive violation that should have not have gone unchecked. It also didn't help that an attorney, Deborah Katz, had warned CNN that a client of hers was making allegations of serious sexual misconduct against Cuomo. But what more did it take? They already had clear evidence that he had sexually harassed a colleague, had crossed journalistic boundaries that they admitted were inappropriate, and may have lied to the network's leadership about his involvement. At what point do an anchor's ratings stop mattering? It shouldn't take two accusations to remove a person from their position, especially when one is confirmed with an email. In a country with such low trust in media, and a country that elected a man with multiple sexual harassment claims, our institutions must do more to earn the people's trust. Anything less is a failure, and while Chris Cuomo is just one example of an outlet failing to hold its staff to a higher standard, nobody should be surprised if something like this happens again. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like and subscribe button to support the channel. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you later.